How is it that we find ourselves surrounded by such complexity, such elegance? The genes of you and me, the genes of you and me, are all made of DNA. We're all made of the same chemical DNA. Hi, you're listening to DNA Today, a podcast and radio show where we discover new advances in the world of genetics. From genetic technology like CRISPR to rare diseases to new research, we have you covered. For a decade, DNA Today has brought you the voices of leaders in genetics. I'm Kira Deneen, your host. I'm also a prenatal genetic counselor. Recording of the Phenotip Speaker Series. This monthly webinar is hosted by myself, Kira Deneen, and sponsored by Phenotips. During these live events, I interview leaders in the field of genetics and moderate questions live from the audience. Check out the upcoming installments by heading over to phenotips.com, where you can also stream all the webinars from the last year and a half that we've been producing the Phenotip Speaker Series. And we hope to see you live for the next event on January 18th, where we're going to be discussing ending the diagnostic odyssey, which is a topic we've talked about extensively on DNA Today. You can register for this event via the link in the show notes or in your podcast app um, or on the blog post for this episode available at dnapodcast.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Phenotip Speaker Series. I'm your host, Kira Deneen. Today, we're going to be diving into the future of cancer genetics. We have two lovely guests and experts in genetics joining us. We have Dr. Banu Arun, who is the co-medical director of the Clinical Cancer Genetic Program at the University of Texas and the Anderson Cancer Center. We also have Dr. Mark Robson, who is the chief of breast medicine service at Memorial Hospital. He's a member of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Should all people with breast cancer have genetic testing? And this has been a question that we've been debating for years. The challenge, which which I'm sure we will continue to investigate, is that it's functionally impossible to just test somebody for BRCA1 and BRCA2. You know, the, the issue might be what to do um, when you have uninformative negatives. But the, the, the obviously the, the, the issue is a widespread, you know, it's a widespread cons- um, issue and um, Unfortunately, there is no standard. I don't think documentation of standard of care is likely. I, I think, you know, although reclassification is getting a little bit better, I mean, my experience, and I don't know if this is Dr. Arun's experience, is that it still tends to be more downgrading than upgrading. It also, you know, comes down to, you know, what are you going to do with the results, I think, again. I mean, we've been trying to educate people for 25 years. I mean, you know, we've been trying to assure people that the U.S. doesn't mean you should act. And- what do you think is the clinical utility of the polygenic risk scores? Is there one now? Is this more in the future? The devil is in the details. So which patients are the ones that will actually benefit from that? Like, how do you then uh, manage the process? I actually think that we're, we're just making it too complicated. So that's my radical proposal. I think that, that, is, that is an area that I think we have to do work on. The genes of you and me, the genes of you and me, are all made of DNA. We're all made of the same chemical DNA. Oh, man.